Hi everyone, this is Stephanie Immelman. I'm the CEO of the Delray Beach Chamber. And this is our second of our going to be for the foreseeable future, our weekly webinar series. So we're gonna be doing a lunch and learn series um, at 12.30 on Tuesdays. So this week, uh, very timely and interesting subject and one near and dear to my heart because I'm a marketing person. It's um, marketing during a global pandemic. So I just wanted to quickly introduce our three speakers today. We've got Cara Clapp of the Sack Lunch Marketing Agency, and she's going to be talking about marketing. And we have Kristen Knopfsinger of the Kristen Rose Agency, who's going to be talking about PR. And we have Amanda McMaster of Amanda Media, and she's going to be talking about social media. So I've had the opportunity to work with all three of these women um, in different capacities one way or another, and they're absolutely brilliant. So I'm really, really excited to have them speak to you today. And they each have um, a short presentation. So after each speaker makes their presentation, we'll be able to take questions after each speaker, and then we can just wrap it up at the end. So I'm going to mute myself and go and go off uh, video, but then I'm going to hand it over to Cara Clapp of Sack Lunch Market. All right, she's getting the presentation ready. Um, as soon as it plays, I just, what we're basically talking about is marketing, you know, during a pandemic, I just wanted to get some points, some kind of feedback and some data about where we're at and what's going on, you know, in the marketing world right now, which, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's a very unique time. So just give you some stats and some information of, of what's happening right now. And what can and should you be doing um, to market during COVID-19, uh, if you should be? Uh, should you be marketing to consumers right now? Ask yourself the following. Is your business still relevant during this downturn? Um, and can reaching people help your business make a profit or increase awareness? When I'm talking about increasing awareness, you know, is it something that you can either start promoting yourself for future? Or is it something you can still promote yourself now? Or, for example, are you a nonprofit that can help people at this time? Um, so if yes, we're going to talk about video, social media, online advertising, retargeting, direct mail, and then, of course, other. I don't really talk a lot about other things, but there are other options. You know, there's still outdoor ads. There's still, you know, a lot of e-blasts to something to stay relevant to your market. Um, printing, you can still print your, your pieces, get ahead of the game. Uh, radio, Pandora ads, all that is still going on. Okay, next video. I got some con some actual interesting stats from uh, Effect TV and Comcast. I just did a commercial that launched yesterday that hopefully we'll be able to play later. Um, and this data was from uh, April 5th, so it's very relevant. 84% of people are watching more video on demand, which is on your tablets, on your smartphones, um, constantly in front of your face. You can get it from anywhere. You know, everybody's sharing it. It's the kids, you know, obviously we're all kind of stuck at home. So there's a lot more viewership going on. 93% more time watching cable news. That's a huge stat. Everybody wants to know what's going on. Are you relevant to be on a news station? You know, do, can you run a commercial? Is it something, you know, you want to get in front of people? You can do 15 second spots. They don't cost that much. Making the ad doesn't cost that much. It's much more affordable than it used to be. Um, I think, you know, it could cost, I don't know where they start, but depending on what your industry is and, and how targeted you are, um, you can figure out, you know, what your market is and where you can uh, go from there and, and who you can talk to. 32% more time spent watching TV during the day. Of course, this is all compared to last year in that same two week period. Next. Social media. Um, I think it's probably become really evident to a lot of people what your social media probably looks like right now. Uh, we've talked to some of our clients that are restaurants, um, some other clients that are just really disappointed that they hadn't done social media earlier. I know some of the other panelists are going to dive into this a little more. But, you know, if you're not looking great right now and you didn't have that audience and you're a restaurant that's kind of struggling, it's, it's hard to start an audience, obviously, in this economy. So... You know, think about that. Think about where you're at. Um, right now, more than ever, people are on their social media. 27% up on Facebook. Um, not sure if you're familiar with Nextdoor, how many people are, but Nextdoor is a neighborhood app. So if you're a local 
you know, contractor, a local hurricane shutter company, any kind of local company where you want to be able to reach your neighbors, you can do it on there. You can have a business page on Nextdoor. Uh, LinkedIn viewership is up. LinkedIn was offering their premium membership, which normally costs about $700 a year for free. I believe they still are. If you look into that, it was really, really a great way to connect with um, business to business owners, you know, get your network um, going, make sure your page looks good on LinkedIn and uh, get that, get your information about your company out there. Okay, next. What else could you be doing? Online Google retargeting advertising. If you're in the pool cleaning business, that, that is something that's really strong because everybody's at home using their pools all the time. Um, there's a couple things I didn't put on here. Nonprofits are still something that are really relevant depending on what you're uh, working on. And then, you know, you have your appliance AC repair people are at home, they're cooking, things are breaking, uh, professional cleaning services, grocery, even if you're a small grocery store, uh, you know, doctors, obviously, express docs. And then the legal needs, you know, I'm sure divorce attorneys are gonna be pretty busy and family law and unemployment law and every kind of law you can think of and then veterinarians. Um, I thought of a few other, you know, just if you want to be relevant, you want to make sure if somebody's searching that your information pops up. And especially that is something you can hyper, hyper target on a very local level. You can even look within a five mile radius of who's searching uh, near, you know, what you offer. Okay, next. Direct mail. Everybody knows the mail hasn't stopped. The mail's never stopped. A lot of people thought it was irrelevant for a while. And I didn't put the stat up, but it was something I heard, I want to say about a year ago. Uh, NPR did a study on, on how direct mail, a lot of people are going back to direct mail because people aren't doing it. Our, our inboxes are flooded with emails. A lot of people aren't paying attention to the e-blasts. But guess what? They're still getting the mail. And now you stand out because you're not against, you know, all those other people that used to flood your mailbox. Um, so other services, same thing, pool cleaning service, all these local things you could be doing. You could be adding, you know, a coupon. If people right now, we're all scared that hurricanes are gonna start coming back. It's a good time to make sure your hurricane shutters are up to date. You know, do you want to have a couple of clear hurricane shutters in comparison? So you're, I was thinking about that recently, so I'm not sitting in the dark, you know, for the next hurricane. Um, all these other things that are still so local and you can reach them with a discount or, you know, a really great deal right now uh, with direct mail. All right, next. If your business is out of commission, if you're something that's not relevant in this time and you've just shut down, um, ask yourself the hard question is whether or not you're going to be able to weather this storm. If you're going to make it out of this, okay. If your business will come out of this, um, you know, with some money still in its pocket and able to get back out there to your consumers. Really, 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 it's something I'm focusing on with my company. I'm helping a lot of companies right now focus on it. We're redoing people's social media pages where we're setting up their grids and doing their advertising. We are redoing websites. We're rebranding about seven clients that reached out to us to say we're ready for a rebrand. Uh, at Sack Lunch, we do a lot of product packaging. So it's a good time for people to update their product packaging. So ask yourself if, um, you know, if it's time for a rebrand, how do you look? What is your, you know, have you not done anything in 20 years? Is your website, you know, really dated and, you know, looking old? It's maybe it's time to just, you know, if you have the downtime, it's time to do it. Devise a marketing strategy for what are you going to do when, when the economy starts coming back? You know, how are you going to handle that? What are you going to do month to month? Day over day? How are you going to advertise? Um, you can start getting your commercials ready. You can start getting your video ready you can get everything out there and uh, be prepared to really go back uh, with a bang. Um, new or upgraded product design I already talked about, you know, your social media, what a grid is, is kind of like, uh, you know, just making yourself look good from the beginning, maybe getting rid of all the old stuff that didn't make you look so good. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people always say blogging, copywriting, like have them ready to go out and, and, you know, you can, you can strategically place those ads and, and all those blogs to be prepared for your site. So you have one to go out every month or something and, and start your arsenal right now. Um, you know, get it all ready to go. Okay, here's just a couple of client examples of fun stuff I thought maybe I could share of what we've quickly done to help some clients. If anyone knows 
Uh, Two Fat Cookies has been around for a while. They have a great shop downtown Del Rey. Uh, they came to us a while back and said they wanted to start a breakfast. They were going to be named something else. I can't remember, but I said, you got to stick with your brand, which is Too Fat. And they said, well, people don't want to think about being fat. And I said, well, no, people like a big fat breakfast sandwich. And um, they launched about a year ago, and they're really happy they, they did that and had that window. So when this hit, they said, hey, let's do a pop-up lunch. We created a menu. They have a big sign that hangs back, and then we co-branded with them to say it's always a good day for a happy lunch. So you could pick up, you know, they came out with sandwiches, a cookie, chips, and a drink, you know, all reasonable price. As, as you can see from their menu, it's like $7.95 up to $10, bucks, just depending on what it is. Um, you know, you can get creative on how do you get in touch with people in a different way. All right. Next. Uh, in good taste, uh, this she was one of those clients. Her food is phenomenal. She's run a catering business forever. She also came to us with uh, wanting to open the doors of a cafe. So we talked to her and said, hey, offer coffee. You know, that's something that people want to want to see if they, if they consider you a cafe. We started doing some e-blasts for her, putting her menus online. I think she worked, she did that one uh, day with the, with that, uh, the social distancing menu that, that went out. We helped her with that. We actually went in and took pictures of her food because she had never done that. She never had to worry about it. She wasn't normally trying to get the day-to-day the -day consumer in there. She was trying to kind of drive business to her catering just by having her doors open as a cafe so people could sample her food. But she was worried because she hadn't planned on that. So um, we've been helping her with that. We made her a sign for the outside of her business just to let people know that she's open. All right, next. And lastly, um, we just, this came out yesterday. We'll see if this link works. Um, Ruth Rails, if people aren't familiar with them, we do all of their advertising. Um, I don't know if it's going anywhere. Angel, I'm not sure, I don't see it. Uh, we just did three spots for them, basically letting people know of their services. Uh, that's why I was saying if you're a nonprofit, you know, it helps to, you know, get out there and let your people know that you're there to serve them right they do they help with career and assistance they help with food they have food delivery they actually have financial aid for people who are you know the most in need and so that was something i said hey like it's time right now people need to know what you do you are offering services that everybody needs they really help the boca and delray community especially the elderly community so we wanted to let people know that they're there and that was um we got that produced and on, you know, starting and launching on TV. Oh, here we go. I don't know if that's, I can't hear it. It's okay to ask Just a quick 30 second spot explaining what they did. This took sure that no family goes hungry. And our career and employment services can help you get back to work. Reaching the Boca community. We have emergency financial assistance available for those most in need. Call 561-852-3333 or visit railsjfs.org today. So something like that. We did two 15-second spots. They're running them a lot. It's not an expensive buy. Um, it's something I think they're paying total... I'm not entirely sure. It, it works through Effect TV, which is a Comcast broadcasting thing. Um, they're playing on the news networks, like everywhere where they can reach their, their general um, population of, of people that are in need right now, which is, which is everybody. So it's a good time to be doing that. Next, if it comes back. Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my little link threw it off. Just, you know, everybody's watching video. So it really, if you have something relevant that people need, it's, it's a really good time to reach them. And video online, you know, whether it's on a YouTube channel or, you know, there's, you know, that's, that's what they're served often. If, if somebody's searching something and you're doing the retargeting app, they're, ser they're served your video. Um, and people are clicking on them and, and looking through things there, you know, you, can't get away from from watching the video.
just trying to get back to the presentation, which Hey, Kara, you could screen share. Um, I had it open somewhere. Oh, there we go. Okay. I just have one more slide left and then, and then I'm, I'm done. Um, so from our, my, my agency to all of you, uh, stay safe. So, and um, we're, I'm open for any questions. If we're going to do questions now or at the end. That, that was my last slide. So we can work on go into the next uh, presentation for the next panelist. And if there's anything you guys need, obviously that I've covered and you're, you want questions or ask later, feel free to reach out. Um, if you go to sacklegeagency.com, you can reach out directly to me or to any of my team members and uh, we'll answer any questions you guys might have. Thanks. All right, I guess I'm next. Let's see if I'm on. Hi. Um, that was great, Kara. I actually took some screenshots. There's some good information. Like I've been um, telling everybody about how viewership is going up and and um, definitely with social media, I've seen a couple statistics, but I really love those Comcast statistics. Um, it's nice to see them in writing how much how much more people are watching um, TV and, and looking at their social media. I mean, it's obvious. Um, to everybody that that's happening, but it's nice to see the numbers. So my name is Kristen Knopfsinger. Um, I have Kristen Rose Agency located in Delray Beach. Um, I'm also on the board of the chamber, um, uh, board of directors, and I'm uh, vice, currently vice chair on the board of directors. So I'm also on the executive board. So I'm really happy to support the chamber in this way. Um, I one thing that I've been saying since the day that I walked in to be on the board of directors was that we need, we as, as a business community community have to band together to help each other and to um, offer each other support in whatever we can. And, and so this webinar series is, is perfect because it's just such a great opportunity to share our gifts and, and our skills and see how we can help each other. So I love it. And I'll, I'll be tuning into the other ones as well. Um, I always love learning. And I, you know, prior to our current state of, of affairs, um, I thought breakfast would be really great to have like a lunch and learning or, or the breakfast and learning um, opportunities. So I'm happy to be here. All right. So let me move my screen a little bit. That first slide was just like an overview of what we're going to be talking about, but you know, I kind of feel like Amanda, Kara, and I will will be preaching to the to the same message, where you know you can take this opportunity to reevaluate um, who your brand is, what your brand is, um, what you've been what you've been doing, and what you can do a little differently. Um, so this is a really fantastic time to get to know your brand. Um, if you've been telling your own story or if you've had other companies tell your story for you, it would be just such a wonderful time to reevaluate what that story is. Um, that might be changing in our new, in our kind of our new environment and the new things that everybody's doing. So this is a good time to reevaluate and make, you know, I have make a list of what makes you the best at what you do and who you are and what your business is and um, evaluate. Are you getting that message across? If you write down exactly what you're good at, but your message isn't reflecting that or the things that have been written about you aren't reflecting that, this is the time to have that introspective approach um, to reevaluate what you're doing. And, and then form a plan of how you want to be put out there. This is your time. You definitely don't want to go dark right now, but this would be the greatest time to put together the 
message as you would like to be seen. And then whether you have, you know, PR efforts ongoing or your social media or whatever you're doing through your marketing, you can make a plan, like do it now, revise your message now. What do you want to speak to for your company now? Or make the plan, like um, Kara said, for the future when you, when you start to be relevant again. And then I have this other note, um, this other bullet point on here. If you have current clients, take this time to date them. Don't take that relationship for granted. Um, this is something that a business mentor of mine told me. And I, I feel like there's a lot of businesses out there that have client oriented business. Um, and if you're anything experiencing anything like I've experienced with this current um, situation, you know, there are certain clients out there that are just like, hmm, well, maybe we don't really need to have this relationship right now and maybe we'll put it on hold. Um, those clients that maybe you might've taken for granted or you maybe weren't paying as much attention to. And I just wanted to offer this, um, this little tidbit of advice that my business mentor gave me is that you can, in this downtime or what little downtime you might have, I don't have that much, but but it's, it's just a different busy. Um, you can take the time to date your clients again. Um, this, it, it does happen that those relationships kind of go a little bit stale or aren't revived and, and you can, you know, go back into that courtship of, of um, showing your clients why they're important and why they're special and definitely working with them to put their best foot forward or in whatever business that you're in. Um, I've found that I've seen a lot of really beautiful messages coming out of people being encouraging through the media and, and, you know, lawyers offering free services, things like that. So they're just, there's just a lot of um, opportunity for that. I just got a chat message. I think we have to do questions after. Oh, she says, but it's applicable to the last point. What are some ways you suggest that we date our clients? So that's from Kristen that works with, um, I don't know if everybody gets to see the chat, but that's from Kristen who works with Space of Mind. And so your clients would be um, the, the kids' parents, right? That would be considered your client. I would just say there could be a much bigger effort put forth um, to just get to know them better. Uh, if, if that's the client, and you can tell me if your client is different, but I'm pretty sure your client that you're talking about would be your, the kids' parents, the parents of the kids, and probably the kids too. You know, this could be a time to get to know them better. Um, dig deeper into their issues, their problems. What took them, what, um, this is actually a really key point. When, you, when you're in any business, you wanna develop your ideal consumer. And in public relations, you want to develop your ideal audience member. Um, who's going to be reading about you? Who's going to be looking into this information? It might be everybody, but it might be also a small, you know, a small group of people. So in your case for space of mind, that would be those parents out there that want to find alternative learning for their, for their student, for their children. And so now would be a great time to investigate the current parents that you have get to know them better, learn what brought them to you, and then use that information to apply to later on or currently getting more parents. Um, okay, we're going back. Can we go backwards? <laughs> Sorry, Angel. Is this the second slide? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So read, listen, watch. This is, this is a part of a talk that I give quite often on PR and doing your own PR. And one of the most important things that you can ever do is, is are these three things. I should say three of the most important things. Read, listen, watch. And now that you have this downtime, or if you have any, you can do that for your own business. You need to investigate what's out there. Who is talking about your particular um, business and what you do? Um, for, I, let's just keep using space of mind as an example. So they're an alternative um, type of a homeschooling model, alternative learning, um, individualized learning. And this could be a great time for them to look into what's being written out there about individualized learning. They can also 
tie it into what's happening right now where so many people are forced into homeschooling where this has been kind of their, this has been their ball court for like a really long time. Um, so they can speak to that specifically. And so they can look out and see who is writing about this stuff, what they're saying. Um, if you find like an article in Time Magazine where this writer talks about everybody suddenly being thrust into homeschooling and what are the challenges there and all that, you could take that write to that writer and say, hey, I saw this article that you wrote about. If you um, want to cover this again, I am so open to being your, uh, your thought leader in this, in this subject. So that's a little, a little bit of read, listen, watching. If you stay awake and you are into um, finding the stuff that's being said about you, you can definitely utilize that to get people to actually talk about you or use you as a reference, which I think is probably one of the biggest goals that we have with clients is to get them to be thought leaders, to get them to be referenced so that, you know, when that time writer is going to write another article or somebody else needs to write an article about blah, 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 they're going to, they're going to seek you out as, as that thought leader. And so through that, you need to watch TV, YouTube, Instagram stories, read newspapers, articles, magazines, radio, and podcasts. So podcasts are a bigger, a big like thing that you want to pay attention to right now. YouTube channels and podcasts. Um, I feel like that's a, an avenue of press that a lot of people forget about. And podcasts can be very well received and have huge audience audiences and it might be time to start looking into podcasts and seeing which ones out there are talking about your industry. And, and they, one thing I found about YouTube channels and podcasts is that the, even the really big ones, they're really accessible. That doesn't mean they're definitely going to talk about you. However, they're accessible. You can get their email address. You can get their contacts. You can get phone numbers in certain situations. Like you can talk to these hosts and, and talk to them about what you do and possibly get to be a guest or um, a speaker on one of these. Um, and it's much more accessible than like the Today Show or like your random TV channel or whatever. That could be a really, really wonderful way to reach a very broad audience without getting on TV. You know, like people, people are very romanced by the whole TV thing. And I, we often tell clients that it's not, it's not the benchmark. You don't have to reach for that, that TV goal because there's a lot of other things out there that can get you noticed and, and make you relevant. So I said in my last point, you can't afford to take your eye off the ball here because you, do you know who's doing stuff on you and your competition is probably looking for the exact same things. So you want to be on top of who is writing about what. Okay, next slide. So homework, hard work. This is just part of the last point is that you really have to do some hard work. You have to do some research. You have to, um, like I said, think outside of the box. Don't just think print TV. And another point to the print thing. So newspapers are fairly instant. Newspaper articles are online within maybe days, maybe a day, and then they go you know, in print maybe a couple days. Um, magazines take three to four months, sometimes six months of planning out. So when, when clients come to me and they say, I want to be in a magazine, I'll say, okay, well, hopefully you have the time and the ability to get in a contract with us for a long time because magazines definitely plan out way ahead of time for print. Um, for online articles, not so much. They'll, those will happen in a matter of, of days or weeks, but months for print. Um, so this is just about doing the research. Who's your audience? Who's reading and listening and watching about you? And what, what stories are the journalists most interested in telling right now? And that's not just COVID-19. There is so, it, it is, the media market right now is so rich. It is a very rich market right now because there is a lot of aspects and a lot of things happening around what COVID-19 has done to our global community. Um, there are so many different levels of creativity that you can kind of approach this with, and you don't have to shove coronavirus down people's throats to do it. It's, it's just an essence of speaking to what everybody globally is going on with. And I don't know if you're like me, but I feel like this whole thing 
in the positive light has made the world very small. It's made, um, I mean, I have friends all over the world and we're all talking about the same things and they're asking me the same questions and they're going through the same things. And I find that really inspiring and I find it really connecting. And I feel like that's a very positive thing that we can take from all of this is that we are all connected globally and we can go to the next slide. All right, social media. So I know Kara spoke to this and, and Amanda will dive deeper. Um, so if you've never had time to take stock of who and where your audience is, now is the time. You can take a little bit of time to look through those analytics of your social media and find out who is actually paying attention and who isn't. And are they really your demographic or aren't they? We have a, um, a very big influencer who's one of our clients who had a 1.5 million following between all his social channels. And he actually cut that down. Well, in particular, um, Twitter was a million. It was a million plus. And he took the time at this period where he, he's a travel um, expert. And so a lot of his sponsored trips were canceled. Um, so he's had a lot of downtime and he's taken the time to really sort through his entire Twitter audience. And he took it down from like a million plus to somewhere around 700,000. And a lot of people would be like, why did you do that? What, what did you do that for? Well, in actuality, it's kind of like what they're saying about percentages right now with the countries and the population and the actual percent of people being affected. And um, based on your population, that is, it's not as big of a deal as, as they're making it seem. Um, so in his case, his, him having a million plus following, but only getting, you know, maybe uh, let's just say 5% engagement or 2% engagement of that. He's, it's not a very good ratio. Um, if he's got this million followers, but only has seven or 600,000 engaging, why does it doesn't really mean anything for the relationships that he's trying to do. So if you are very upside down, you don't want to be upside down in your audience. And if you're very um, lopsided, it's now time to take a deep look into that. Um, I kind of get the journalist thing. We already went over that. How's your mailing list? Um, this is also a really great time to dive deeper into that. Um, I find myself reading a lot more emails than I used to. A lot more emails uh, because the, before I didn't really have the time. I was probably commuting. I was probably driving. I was going places. Um, so the, the audience that you have through your mailing list is the only audience you truly own. You own that audience. Now, PR is like a different thing. Um, that's earned media. Those are audiences that you're kind of, you're just, you just get as a gift. Um, when you do advertising, you are renting that audience. And then when you have your own mailing list and your own context, you truly own it and you don't own your social media audiences. So now would be the time to really take a deep dive into that list and see what your read rate is, um, who's reading all your emails as opposed to maybe one, who hasn't read one for a year, who hasn't read one for five years. Both Constant Contact and MailChimp have analytics that will tell you those things. You just have to do a little bit of a, of a dig to find them. So I would suggest taking a deep dive into that and figuring it out. And, and if you say like, oh, I don't know how to work it or I don't know how to work MailChimp, there are tons of videos from both Constant Contact, MailChimp, like uh, all of them have tons of online videos um, through YouTube, whatever, through their own, through the own so the software resource that you can learn how to do this and dive into your analytics and start to trim the fat of, of your mailing list because you right now can really utilize your email mailing list, just like your print mail mailing list. People are starting to pay attention a little bit more to those things. And I would think that now would be the time to make it your best foot forward um, for that. And then find your ideal collaborators and partners. You definitely want to see if there's a business out there that you can actually collaborate with, that you can partner with, that you can, you have a mailing list, they have a mailing list, you have a similar business, they have a similar business. Hey, let's team up and, and send something collectively out to, now I have, I have 5,000 people, you have 2,000 people, now we have 7,000 people. Um, I have a 50% read rate. You have a 50% read rate. You know what you know what I'm getting at. So, this is this is a great time to investigate who can partner with you, who can collaborate with you um, on these things because 
maybe you didn't think of it before, but there is so much strength in numbers. And I think we're figuring that out now um, and in virtual numbers to be specific. So when you have a collaborative partner, not only do you get the asset of their mailing list, their audience, but you might have the asset of their social audience as well. So I don't know what that means and maybe we'll take some questions for that um, later. Thank you. So the pitch, um, this is very wordy. So it's kind of like, I didn't know if they would be sharing these slides for notes later, but it's basically um, what I said before about how this outbreak has changed. It's, it's changed every facet of life. And what I said before, um, it, it kind of speaks to that, is that you have to identify what facets your business can actually appeal to through this new normal. And again, not to shove COVID-19 down people's throats, but just to speak to, hey, you're a stay-at-home mom and the, these are the new challenges that you have. Well, I can answer this and I, my business can answer this problem for you. Um, we'll probably, I can totally brainstorm when we, when we question um, after this. So next slide. So above all, be human and be nice. Um, there, there's a fine line right now between um, trying to get a journalist to write about you because you're using like hashtag coronavirus or, and there's a lot of like kind of capitalizing on, on the illness. And you have to remember that this is a real thing. People are sick and dying and you don't want to capitalize on that. Um, I put on this slide, like err on the side of caution. If you're not sure if you're capitalizing on someone else's misfortune, you probably are. So above all, be nice and, and remember that, yes, you can use this to bring your business to people, but you always have to remember is that you put yourself in the, in the position of, I want my business to serve a need, not I need you to serve me. So always keep that in mind that you want to serve a need. And it, so if you are pitching yourself or if you're looking into um, new opportunities or partners and collaborations, always have the um, intention of serving a need and, and helping your fellow man. Because in, if you always have that focus and, that, um, and your attention on that, you'll end up doing good things. Um, if your intention is to bring attention to yourself, it won't necessarily happen for you. I just feel like if you if you bring forth the effort of helping other people, then then you yourself will be helped in more ways than one. So I said, remember that we're all in this together. Life is going on, but has a definite limp. So be sensitive and try to contribute to the hope that we need we all need to build together. And that's that. So now we'll take questions. I hope I spoke to some, some of your PR questions, but if you have, if you have any like going forward, feel free to email me. Um, my email address is kr at kristenr.com, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-R.com. I'd be happy to take the time to talk to you or email you. Um, I was just saying, I just thought of something else that I just told a client yesterday where she was like, I have this one client, she has a series of online classes that she's trying to sell memberships for. And now in this current um, situation, it's kind of hard to sell memberships when so many memberships are being given uh, for free. So I just said that, you know, this might be the time to, uh, to figure out who your ideal audience member is. And if you have, so she said to me, well, I'd love to clone this person because this person takes my classes and loves them and is speaking so highly of it and whatever. And I said, well, then ask her questions. Ask her, what does she read normally? What shows does she watch? Um, what magazines does she subscribe to or read online? Um, all of those things. So you need to just dive deeper into that. If you have a, a customer or a client that you, want to rep, that you want to replicate, then you need to dive deeper into that person's persona and then seek out that demographic and that audience that, um, that, you, that you develop. So it's almost like putting together an avatar of what your ideal consumer or customer is. And that's it.
Okay, hi everyone. I'm Amanda with Mac Amanda Media. Um, so I have a unique situation. My husband is essential at work. So I'm home with the baby all by myself. So we are going to try to get through this. I actually pre-recorded my session with Tiffany last night um, to see, you know, so you get the best experience possible without interruption. So we're gonna go ahead and share my presentation. Hi everybody, it's Amanda with Mac Amanda Media. And All right, sorry about that. We're trying it again. Hi, everybody. It's Amanda with Mac Amanda Media, and my hi, everybody. It's Amanda with Mac Amanda Media, and my part of this presentation is called "Social Media During a Global Pandemic." And I'm just going to show you some ideas and some tips and some tricks to get you more engagement and to promote your brand during this crazy time. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is how important it is to have updated current information on social media. So here's just a few stats. So 60% of consumers visit your Facebook page before they visit your website. And 80% of consumers look to see if your Facebook page is up to date. So that's crazy, right? I know I've even done it myself. I'm trying to search for something on the internet. I come across somebody's Facebook page or their website and then I go check out their Facebook page and it's not up to date and I kind of just assume that they're not really in business anymore or maybe they don't really care. Um, so it's so important to keep your Facebook page and other platforms up to date because people do look at them. In fact, even 62% of consumers say Facebook is the most useful social media channel to research small businesses. So what that means is that people are using your Facebook, your business Facebook page to research your business. So you want to make sure everything on there is up to date. And a little fact about Instagram, users spend an average of 53 minutes per day on the site. And Instagram is super popular right now. So that means a lot of people are on there, they're looking for things and you want to be there. So that's a few facts to help us get started. Um, my first tip for today um, is to give yourself a social media makeover. Right now, everybody's online, everybody's looking at things, and you wanna make sure your information on your social media profiles is up to date. So give your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever social media pages you're on, a professional polished appearance, and make sure that your branding is consistent throughout all your platforms. If you're using your own headshot, make sure it's a recent headshot, it's up to date. If you're using a logo, make sure it's the same across your platforms, it's the same on your website. Make sure um, your profile has kind of the same information on each of your different profiles. Um, make sure your bio is accurate and it's interesting. It kind of shines your personality a little bit. And make sure it's easy for people to contact you. Okay, so you don't want them having to search all over the internet to try to find your website, your email, your phone number. You want them to see it and be able to contact you right there. So make sure it's up there, it's present, and it's easy to find. Also make sure your location is on all your profiles. Sometimes I'm looking through Instagram or Facebook, especially Instagram, and I come across something, some business that I think is really cool, and I'm like, oh, weird, where are they located? And it's nowhere on there. So I don't know if they're near me. I don't know where they are. So location is definitely something you want to make sure that's on there, especially if you do business locally. Make sure that your services are clearly featured in your profile and make sure they're up to date. Um, here's a few examples of some of my clients and my own Instagram profile to give you an example. 
So you see Anna Hess, it's her most recent uh, headshot. Um, it says what she does, she's a luxury event designer. Right now it says she's offering virtual services, so you know that she's still doing business right now. She's located in South Florida. You can easily message her or contact her right from her profile. And she has a link tree link that actually goes to her most recent blogs, you can sign up for her newsletter and you can contact her from there, find out more information. Same with uh, Studio B Squared, another one of my clients. It says clearly what he does. It says that he has virtual and socially safe services available. And instead of meeting face-to-face, -face, which he usually does, he's now offering uh, virtual coffee meetings, um, which you can sign up for in his link tree link, along with a lot of other information on there. And you can clearly contact him. Um, same thing with mine. So just make sure your profiles, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, are up to date. Make sure people know if you're still doing business, what you're doing, and how they can do business with you. Um, next. If you're like me, you kind of plan out all your content. So I have content calendars for myself and all of my clients. I plan ahead, I schedule, um, we strategize. We do a lot of things day to day, but a lot of it is scheduled with a, a real strategy in place and our content is all planned out. So now in this crazy time, we really have to shift gears. We have to update our content. And I just wanted to provide a few samples and some ideas that you could use. So, um, Obviously, you might be offering new services now. Maybe you used to do something face-to-face -face or in person, and now you have to do digital services. Uh, maybe you have a restaurant, and now you have takeout, whatever it is. You need to clearly communicate that um, through posting. Social media is a great communication tool. So you want to communicate your new hours, your new services, or any new information that people need to know in a timely, clear manner. Um, this will help you um, stay in business, will help you communicate to your customers. Um, if you're scheduling posts, you can still schedule some, but probably not that far in advance. Um, you don't want to automate, and what I mean by that, um, scheduling means you can go back and you can change things, right? So if something comes up, you can go back in and you can change it. Automating you just set it and let it go. You don't want to do that. Things are changing too fast. You want to make sure that you're on top of things and you can easily change them if you need to. Um, definitely update posts, go back, check through, update the content, um, and start thinking about um, content that is relevant now. So here's a few examples from my clients. So we had plans for all of them, but they shifted. So like Zuna Realty, you know, we had some really cool things planned, but now we're doing content like virtual tour preparation, how to prep your home, for a 360 video, right? So now they're all into virtual tours, they're a real estate company, that's how they're doing their business. Um, so we had to shift some of our blogs, some of our things and our social media content to meet this new virtual reality that we're living in. Um, Anna Hess, she's a wedding planner, she's an event planner. Um, so we shifted from, you know, trying to do, you know, planning weddings, look at venues, all of those things to, helping uh, brides reschedule their wedding. So her new content is what to do if your wedding is scheduled during the coronavirus and she's giving really great useful information to brides on how to handle, handle a cancellation or a postponement of your big day. Um, Fariel, an image consultant, she also does training. Um, she's now shifted to a really fun thing that's actually sold out recently. Um, she's offering free webinars where you can learn how to uh, organize your closet while you're home. And I guess people are really interested in that. It's something that, you know, people have time to do now. So she's offering free webinars on how to organize your closet. It's getting her a lot of engagement. People are interested in it. And then finally, Kevin, who's an interior designer. Um, he has a lot of blogs. We do a lot of different things. But now we're really focusing on home office design tips you know, the best way to work from home and design it so that it's functional, um, beautiful in your home, because um, he's an interior designer and he has a lot of great tips and trips, tips and tricks for your home office. So these are some examples of some new content and think about different topics that you can do for your own business and different content you can share with your audience. Um, think about getting really creative. Um, 
So in general, you know, I like to play holidays and things and be fun and creative, but, um, you know, you want to get engagement. So you just don't want to post like a, you know, happy Easter, or happy Passover message. You might want to get a little bit more fun to try to get a post to go viral or get a lot of engagement on it. So these are just some examples from one of my clients, Anna Hess. Um, so she recently, um, she's an event planner. So these posts actually show how creative she is, um, shows that she loves to do like different themes, shows that she can really put together a cocktail or a spread. Um, it shows her talent. And it's not just something that says like, happy Easter, happy Passover. Um, this first one, she plays up on the virtual happy hours and she made a quarantini. And she, you know, did a little recipe, cranberry juice, orange juice, vodka, ice, and, a, and drink. So it spells out COVID and the recipe. So it's just something fun. It got a ton of engagement. Um, a lot of people liked it. Um, then the same thing with Easter. She did a bunny cocktail. It was like, you know, a chocolate bunny. And she filled it with chilled Baileys and did like this beautiful presentation. So that also got a lot of engagement. And then finally on Passover, she actually, this is a board she created in her home. Um, we talked about how, yes, you might be doing Passover through Zoom, but you can still enjoy this beautiful spread. And she really showcased her talent and it got a ton of engagement. Um, she got a lot of interest in it. And it's just something different. It's not just a generic post. It's thinking outside the box, using your talents, showing people, you know, what your skills are, what you can do. And, um, playing off what's going on in the world to get some fun engagement. Um, so another thing that you can do to kind of bring attention to your brand is show off, you know, what you're doing. Um, that's a story. So I wanted to give a few examples. Um, so this is my client Emiliano of Studio B2. And you know, one of his strengths, you know, he's a photographer, a graphic designer, printer, he does a lot of really good things. But one of his strengths is that he's really good at networking, and he's always out networking, you know, with everybody in town. So we really try to use that um, throughout all of his campaigns. But right now, um, one thing that he was really doing, not just saying, is he was supporting local. So he was out there, you know, here's a selfie of him supporting the original popcorn house, one of his clients, um, of course, staying six feet away. But he's not just sit telling people to support local, he's actually doing it. So we started a support local campaign and that brought him a lot of attention, but also enabled him to tag people, um, they're sharing it. So it got him a little bit of engagement on his different social media channels. And it really showed that he cares about his community. Um, it's a good story. Um, and he does this, you know, less and less as things get worse, but he's still out there. He's still supporting business however he can safely. So if you check out his Instagram, you'll see that he's out, you know, supporting different businesses in the area. Um, another story I thought was really cool is Amanda Perna. She's not one of my clients. I just really like what she's doing. So she used the opportunity. She's a fashion designer to sew masks. And what's really great is that she's using her social media channels to give tutorials on how to create mask, masks through sewing, um, but also um, non-sew options so that everyone can do it. Um, she's sharing the press that she's getting for creating you know, thousands of masks for health workers and for regular people like me and you. So she's really using this opportunity to really give back to the community, um, to share, stories and videos on how people can make them in their own home, which helps people. But it's also a great PR opportunity. And it's bringing a lot of, a lot of attention to her brand. Um, it's making her brand look really good. And um, she's doing a great job showing it off on social media. It's a great story. So what are you doing right now? Are you supporting local businesses? Are you volunteering? How are you giving back? Are you providing a discounted or free service? You're providing free information or webinars like Amanda is going live, doing different tips and tricks. Um, those are stories. So make sure you get those out there. Share what you're doing. Um, you'll get some engagement for it. Tag people that you're working with. 
Another great thing to do right now is join groups. And these groups can be on Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, and it's a great way to get social, right? So it helps you network. Um, we can't network face to face, but you can network through groups and they're very popular right now, especially Facebook groups. Um, you can join ones for your own industry, right? So I'm involved in a lot of ones for the event industry and it's a great way for people to share their struggles, their successes, um, their knowledge with other people in their industry. It lets you talk about tips and tricks and different things that you're doing. Um, if you need to get grants or funding, you can share all of that sort of information on those groups. Um, it allows you to promote your business. Um, for example, uh, there's a new supper club, which was established to help local restaurants. And a lot of them are actually, were closed and are actually reopening and doing takeout just because of this Facebook group. So any local restaurants need to be a part of the supper club because it's a great opportunity to promote your business, your takeout, um, and to keep your employees working. So this was a huge success. Um, I know the chamber really supports it and a lot of people involved in the chamber do as well. So, so that's one way. There's other groups out there that you can join for your industry. I know I belong to one called Women Helping Women Entrepreneurs. And it's a great way to share your different social media platforms and everyone follows each other. Um, we get a lot of business from each other. You know, if somebody needs marketing help, I'm able to reach out and tell them what I can do for them. Um, if I'm looking for some accounting help or whatever it is, people, you know, people can contact me through that group. So it's a great way to support each other. Um, it's also a great way to connect with your community, right? Keep in touch, see what's going on. Um, I know the chamber has their own uh, Facebook group. So you can see what's happening in the chamber. They gave a lot of uh, information about what's happening in the city and county during this time and what businesses are up to and local businesses that are members all of us we can share what our um, businesses are doing right now and, and promote our own business and connect with other members um, one of my clients Zuna Realty we started a Boca Point Community Care so down in Boca and it's just a way for Zuna to keep in touch with their local community so it's not about selling real estate. It's just them giving out good information, seeing what people are struggling with, seeing how they can help people in their community, talking about how people are staying busy, how people are staying safe. And it's a great way for them to keep in touch with their community and grow their brand at the same time. They actually have a campaign called Zuner Cares. So it really fits in with that. They're really big about giving back. So it's one way for them to keep in touch with their community. And it helps you finally support local, right? So even if you just join as a person, as yourself, um, it helps you see what's going on, uh, helps you get takeout from different places, see how you can support local businesses in the area. Um, so I would really recommend looking at groups. Um, it will help you tremendously with your business and personally right now. It's a great way to keep in touch. Okay, this is a tough one for some people because I don't know if you're like me, you don't necessarily like to get in front of the camera, but it's a great time to do it. It's a great time to go live. Um, one thing is live events. Um, if you're, you know, an organization that does concerts or live performances or workshops, um, this is a great time to go live on Facebook. You could do it all you know, it would be free. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the other benefits you get from not, you don't, you can't necessarily sell tickets, but there's a lot of other benefits that you can get from it. Um, some other ideas, if you're a real estate agent or a wedding venue or a museum, you could do virtual tours. Um, I've seen a daring estate down in Miami. They do virtual tours of their property every day. They do sunset images. They do daring views. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do live. Um, even though people can't come into your building, you can bring them in through Facebook Live. Um, if you're other types of businesses, um, you can do quick tips. You can just go on and do a quick live story. Um, 
quick tip for the day. I could do a quick, you know, marketing Monday, quick tips. Um, if you're an accountant, you could do tips about maybe QuickBooks or things business, small businesses might need help with or how to you know, manage your accounting during this crisis, you could do a little Facebook Live webinar. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing interviews and trying to support other businesses and shining the light on different um, entrepreneurs and what people are doing in the community. And it's a great way to share news and information. Um, so back to live events. One of my clients that I worked with, uh, Rose McCarm, which is another marketing company we work together, and one of the clients we manage is Yiddish Tangos. Well, the Yiddish Kite Initiative and their Facebook Live event was called Yiddish Tangos. And, you know, Yiddish Kite had a lot of ticketed theater events planned for March and April. And obviously we had to cancel all of them, which hurt. That's how they, you know, one of the ways they stay in business, one of the ways how they fund their organization. So um, obviously we tried to find a way where they could still perform some of these things and Facebook Live came up. And of course they're like, oh, well, how can we sell tickets? And we decided, well, you can't really sell tickets. You just got to do it for free on Facebook Live. And we, we created a Facebook event. We had a little, a little bit of money that we could do an ad with. It wasn't much. And we just went for it. Um, we joined a lot of groups, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, um, where people would be interested in Jewish culture, tangos, music, theater, as many groups as we could. We shared it in there. Um, we sent out emails, we did social media campaigns, and the night it went live, it had, it was amazing. We had a ton of people watching, and right now, it's been viewed over 83,000 times. So it's absolutely incredible. It's been shared over 909 times. It has almost 2,000 likes. It has just gotten so many engagements and so many views. And although we didn't get to sell tickets, some really great things happened, right? So we got a ton of newsletter signups. They got hundreds of new people subscribing to their newsletter. That's going to help them in the future when they do sell tickets. And it's been helping them with their other live shows that they've done since, which have also been really successful. Because now people are getting that information right in their, right in their inbox. It's also um, produced a lot of donations. So they didn't get to sell tickets, but now they're getting a lot of donations. So that was really good. And it increased um, their Facebook following by over 500 people. So in just a matter of a few days, they got a lot of new Facebook followers. So there's a lot of other benefits. And now we're going to continue this live series. And it's just going to keep getting more people to more people because as we go along, we're getting all those engagements. So if you haven't tried going live, um, give it a try. There's a lot of benefits you can get out of it. Um, I would definitely recommend it. And I just wanted to give you that little example. So I just wanted to give you a few ideas uh, for social media. Um, I hope it's helped you in some way. More than welcome to email me or reach out and I'm happy to help you or give you more ideas or go in more, you know, more detail about any of these things and happy to take questions. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and for bearing with us through mostly my technical difficulties. Um, but we do have the floor open if anybody has any questions um, or there's anything they want to ask, please feel free to do so. Uh, we will be uploading this to our social media as well as our website after and you all will receive a link if you want to share it with um, anybody else. So any questions, anybody? Okay, I always have to say something. Um, so as my team will tell you, my mantra is communicate, communicate, communicate. So now you know all the ways to do it via marketing, PR, and social media. Those are excellent tips. For, and I knew you guys would have some great stuff. If you've got a message, now's your time to take it to every channel that you have. 
And if you're not operating, there, there is still hope. Um, I think you can keep your business top of mind with obviously with helpful information and positive stories right now and how you're helping the community and a little levity and feel free to start conversations. If you're in the travel business, Jeff Dash, you're probably on here. Um, what's your dream? Ask people what their dream vacation is now. What are they dreaming of? What are they missing? What do they want to do? Um, some DIY tips for hair and nails because when your clients are going to come back, they are going to come back with a vengeance, but just keep top of mind with them. Law, accounting, insurance, you can host webinars. Excuse me. <laughs> I just saw one question that somebody asked how about how much for a 15 second TV spot. It really depends um, on, on what, who your audience is. Boke is more expensive. If you go Boke at a Del Rey, if you're, if you're just in Del Rey, you know, the ad buy is, is really dependent on, you can kind of price it out by about a thousand bucks a month and that'll get you a ton of views. Um, the TV commercial itself, not much. You know, I think you could do one for you know 700 bucks, maybe something like that. Those are just ballparks, but it really depends on what you want to spend. Yeah, I was going to speak to that too. I actually think that right now you'd be better off um, doing a social media ad. Like I honestly think whatever you're, unless you have like you know a very big budget, but if you yeah. have a small budget, social media ads will do very well right now. Um, probably get you a bigger audience and, and a better um, response. Which you can also set your budget for that. It's really easy. Yeah, social yep. media is super easy to advertise. And use video when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw Emiliano said, what time is drinks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that brings something up. So we've been doing a lot of uh, the chamber offerings that we normally do. We did government affairs on last Friday via Zoom, it was great. We had a lot of people watch in and then we had even more people watch later, which is great. So we're gonna keep doing that going forward. And the team and I have been talking about, do we wanna do business and bagels and coffees? And are we ready to do uh, contacts and cocktails uh, via Zoom? So we're gonna work on that for all of you guys. Um, also the weekly lunch and our webinars, we're doing them every Tuesday um, at 12.30. Next week is what every business needs to know during the COVID epidemic. And after that on the 28th, We'll have mindfulness and ways to distress, which I think that's really important. And I think um, Angel mentioned that we're, it's dairybeach.com backslash webinars. You can catch the recording and get the slides as well on our website. And last but not least, we're going to be having, the Chamber's going to uh, host a pop-up market on our website. You need to submit your offer via Chamber Master. If you're a Chamber member, we're going to be requesting that and starting to promote that this week. And we're going to have a pop-up shop on our website that we're working on. Cool. Anything else, guys? Oh, do we have questions? Any more questions? I don't think so. Okay. You guys are great. Thank you All so right, much. Go ahead Thanks, everybody. Thanks for attending, everyone. Take care. Thanks for handling it. Bye.